we're given five key points for one cycle of a sine wave. And based on these five key points, what we need to do is we actually need to find the equation for the curve. So how in the world are you going to do this? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to know what does this look like? Because you know that's going to be important. So I'm going to go ahead and graph that. And when you come back, you can check and make sure that what you got is the same thing as what I have. So here's what I got when I graphed the five key points. So how does that help us? Well, we need to look at our general equation. So y equals a sine of x minus c plus d. Now, what is a? a is the amplitude. How in the world do we find the amplitude? Well, remember you can take the largest y value that you have, so the amplitude would equal the largest y value, which is the 6, and then you can subtract off the smallest value, which is 1, so our amplitude is going to be 5. So we've got the 5. Next up we have a c, and the c is what? c is a phase shift. So if we're looking for a phase shift, what do you know? Well, we need to know how is it this one that we've drawn different than the original sine function. Well, we know the original sine function does what? Well, it goes through the origin. And since it goes through the origin, we notice it's been moved over to right here, which is the pi over 4. So that means we've had a phase shift of pi over 4 in the right direction. So that's why it stays negative. Now what's next? Has it shifted up or down? Well, sure it has, because we know the original sign, as I just indicated, is right here at 0, 0. And we notice now, where does it start? It starts right here at this pi over 4, comma 1. So it's been shifted up one unit. So all of that brings us and gives us that final equation. So this is the equation for the curve with those five key points.